Helen Keller, The Story of My Life, Chapter 19. When I began my second year at the Gilman School, I was full of hope and determination to succeed. But during the first few weeks, I was confronted with unforeseen difficulties. Mr. Gilman had agreed that year I should study mathematics principally. I had physics, algebra, geometry, astronomy, Greek, and Latin. Unfortunately, many of the books I needed had not been in boast in time for me to begin with the classes, and I lacked important apparatus for some of my studies. The classes I were in were very large, and it was impossible for the teachers to give me special instruction. Miss Sullivan was obliged to read all the books to me and interpret for the instructors, and for the first time in eleven years it seemed as if her dear hand would not equal the task. It was necessary for me to write algebra and geometry in class and solve problems in physics, and this I could not do until we brought, bought a braille writer, by means of which I could put down the steps and process my work. I could not follow with my eyes the geometric figures drawn on the backboard, and my only means of getting a clear idea of them was to make them on a cushion with straight and wire cur curved wires which had been pointed at ends. I had to carry in my mind, as Mr. Keith says in his report, the lettering of the figures, the hypothesis and the conclusion, the construction and the process of the proof. In every word, every study had its obstacles. Sometimes I lost all courage and betrayed my feelings in a way I am ashamed to remember, especially as the signs of my trouble were afterward used against Miss Sullivan. That's sad. The only person of all the kind friends I had there who could make the crooked straight and the rough places smooth. So she even got mad with her teacher, Miss Sullivan, because she was having problems in college at first. Little by little, however, my difficulties began to disappear. The embossed books and other apparatus arrived, and I threw myself into the work with renewed confidence. Algebra and geometry were the only studies that continued to defy my efforts to comprehend them. As I have said before, I have no aptitude for math mathematics. The different points were not explained to me as fully as I wished. The geometrical diagrams were particularly vexing because I could not see the relation of the different parts to one another, even on the cushion. It was not until Mr. Keith taught me that I had a clear idea of mathematics. I was beginning to overcome these difficulties when an event occurred which changed everything. Just before the books came, Mr. Gilman had begun to remonstrate with Miss Sullivan on the ground that I was working too hard, in spite of my earnest protestations. protestations. He reduced the number of recitations at the beginning we had agreed that I should, if necessary, take five years to prepare for college. But at the end of the first year of the success of my examination showed Miss Sullivan, Miss Harborough, Mr. Gilman's head teacher, and one other that I could, without too much effort, complete my preparation in two years more. Mr. Grobman at first agreed to this, but when my tasks had become somewhat perplexing, he insisted that I was overworked and I should remain at school three years longer. I did not like his plan, for I wished to enter college with my class. On the 17th of November, I was not very well and did not go to school. Although Miss Sullivan knew that my indisposition was not serious, yet Mr. Gilman, on hearing of it, declared that I was breaking down and made changes in my studies which would have rendered it impossible for me to take my final examinations with my class. In the end, the difference of opinion between Mr. Gilman and Miss Sullivan resulted in my mother's withdrawing my sister Mildred and me from the Cambridge School. After some delay, it was arranged that I should continue my studies under a tutor, Mr. Merton S. Keith of Cambridge. Miss Sullivan and I spent the rest of the winter with our friends, the Chamberlains, in, in Rintham, 25 miles from Boston. From February to July of 1898, Mr. Keith came out to Rintham twice a week and taught me algebra, geometry, Greek, and Latin. Miss Sullivan interpreted his instruction. In October 1898, we returned to Boston. For eight months, Mr. Keith gave me less than five times a week, in periods of about an hour. He explained each time what I did not understand in the previous lesson, assigned new work, and took home with him the Greek exercises which I had written during the week on my typewriter, corrected them fully, and returned them to me. In this, in this way, my preparation for college went on without interruption. I found it much easier and pleasanter to be taught by myself than to receive instruction in class. There was no hurry, no confusion. My tutor had plenty of time to explain what I did not understand, so I got on faster and did better work than I ever did in school. I still found more difficulty in mastering problems in mathematics than I did in any other of my studies. I wish algebra and geometry had been half as easy as the half as easy as the languages and literature. But even mathematics, Mr. Keith made interesting. He succeeded in whittling problems small enough to get through my brain. 
He kept my mind all alert and eager, and trained it to reason clear, clearly, and to seek conclusions, conclusions calmly and logically, instead of jumping wildly into space and arriving nowhere. He was always gentle and forbearing, no matter how dull I might be, and believe me, my stupidity would often have exhausted, exhausted the patience of Job. On the 29th and 30th of June, 1899, I took my final examinations for Radcliffe College. The first day I had elementary Greek and advanced Latin, and the second day geometry, algebra, and advanced Greek. The college authorities did not allow Miss Sullivan to read the examination papers to me, so Mr. Eugene C. Vining, one of the instructors at the Perkins Institute for the Blind, was employed to copy the papers for me in American Braille. Mr. Vining was a stranger to me and could not communicate with me except by writing Braille. The proctor was also a stranger and did not attempt to communicate with me in any way. The Braille worked well enough in the, in the languages, but when it came to geometry and algebra, difficulties arose. I was sorely perplexed and felt discouraged wasting much precious time, especially in algebra. It is true that I was familiar with all literary Braille in common use in this country, English, American, and New York Point, but the various signs and symbols in geometry and algebra in the three systems are very different and I had used only the English Braille in my algebra. Two days before the examinations, Mr. Vining sent me a Braille copy of one of my old Harvard papers in algebra. To my dismay, I found that it was in the American notation. I sat down immediately and wrote to Mr. Vining, asking him to explain the signs. I received another paper in a table of signs by return mail, and I set to work to learn the notation. But on a night before the algebra examination, while I was struggling over some very complicated examples, I could not tell the combinations of bracket, brace, and radical. Both Mr. Keith and I were distressed and full of foreboding for the morrow, but we went over to the college and a little before the examination began, and I had Mr. Vining explain more fully the American symbols. In geometry, my chief difficulty was that I had always been accustomed to read the propositions in line print or to have them spelled into my hand, and somehow, although the propositions were right before me, I found the braille confusing and could not fix clearly in my mind what I was reading. But when I took up algebra, I had a harder time still. The signs, which I had so lately learned, and which I thought I knew, perplexed me. Besides, I could not see what I wrote on my typewriter. I had always done my work in Braille or in my head. Mr. Keith had relied, too, much on my ability to solve problems mentally, and had not trained me to write examination papers. Consequently, my work was painfully slow, and I had to read the examples over and over before I could form any idea of what I was required to do. Indeed, I am not sure how that I read all the signs correctly. I found it very hard to keep my wits about me. But I do not blame anyone. The administrative board at Radcliffe did not realize how difficult they were making my examinations, nor did they understand the peculiar difficulties I had to surmount. But if they had, if they un unintentionally placed obstacles in my way, I have the consolation of knowing that I overcame them all. That was uh, Helen Keller, The Story of My Life, Chapter 19. Apologize about the uh, noise out there. It's, there's some uh, drug addicts or something going on. At 10 a.m., people yelling and stuff. It's a little distracting. But once again, that was Helen Keller, uh, Chapter 19, uh, Story of My Life. This is uh, Gregory Brandt. And uh, feel free to like and subscribe and check out my other uh, channels and videos. Thank you.